Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion. Yo, host Hud, welcome back to the Baseball Hut, I hope you like this video. So, the Juan Soto sweepstakes has begun. The Yankees humiliate themselves in the World Series in Game 5. Juan Soto, who had played great, uh, and got them to the World Series. Well, it seems that the Yankee fans have complained about him, saying, hey, we want him back. But, uh, at least a dozen teams have checked in on him already. Uh, you can talk to players; you just you just can't sign them. Uh, and and in about four or five days, five days after the World Series is over, players can talk to teams, which starts on Monday, November fourth. Uh, now, before we get into this video, please hit the subscribe button. There's gonna be plenty of videos of Juan Soto until he signs with a team. Uh, this offseason. So your host is going to have a lot of videos on him pretty much on a regular basis. Most Mostly every day. Uh, depends on what news is coming out. and and uh, But he, he did it obviously after the game on, on Wednesday. Uh, he talked to the media. Uh, the sort of take was from him that he's going to go to the hardest better. He's, you know, he has certain things he's looking for. But money's the big thing with him. He turned out a big contract from the uh, Washington Nationals two years ago for four hundred and forty million turned it down, which is why he got traded to San Diego. There was all kinds of rumors that he was gonna be uh, he was working on a deal with Peter Seidler, the for, the uh, late owner of the Padres, but then the owner obviously passed away, and that did not come to fruition. So now again he got traded to the Yankees. Uh, the Yankees, again, would not be in the World Series if it wasn't for him hitting that big home run against the Guardians. And his great play with, with them uh, showed that he could play here in New York. He's got a big personality, very bubbly personality. Fits in perfectly with, with uh, what New York is looking for. Now, we have a report here from the New York Post. Mets among first teams to check in on Juan Soto after the World Series. This is by uh, Mike Puma. Juan Soto is officially a free agent, and there is no shortage of early interest. Roughly a dozen teams have checked in on Soto. It's believed the Mets are among them in the aftermath of the Yankees' loss to the Dodgers in Game 5 of the World Series on Wednesday. The Mets' interest is no surprise. The 26-year-old outfield is the premier player on the market, and the team has a need for another bat and the payroll flexibility. Soto was asked about the Mets specifically about what could have been his final game with the Yankees. Quote, I don't know what teams are going to come after me, but definitely I will be open to this. And every single team, Soto said, I don't have any doors closed. Well, the door is closed. The door is always open depending on the paycheck. If it, it, It'll be closed if he's not going to get the money that he wants. The Yankees could extend a qualifying offer with, worth $21.05 million to Soto for next season. That would bring draft pick compensation if he departs through free agency. The Mets, as they look to retool their farm system, aren't expected to go heavy on players with qualifying orbits attached. But we make an exception for Soto, who produced a 288, 419 on base percentage, 569 slugging percentage clip with 41 home runs and 109 RBIs during that during the regular season. Just had an incredible year. The Mets have about $90 million in dead money coming off the books from players such as Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, and James McCann, all of whom were traded in the middle of multi-year contracts. I would also mention two other players that could be moved, where the Mets could eat some of the money, and that's Stanley Marte, who's coming up on the last year of his contract. I believe he's got $20 million. I might be wrong on the money, but I, I can see the Mets eating some of that money and getting him out of here just to cut down on the payroll. And Jeff McNeil. Uh, the Mets have so many middle infielders that are getting close to being ready. Luis and Helcunia's here. Ronnie Mauricio's on the horizon at some point if he, you know, clears all these injury hurdles that he's had. And, of course, we have Jet Williams uh, in the Arizona Fall League, uh, Reagan. Uh, these are kids that, are, that need to play. You know what I mean? And the Mets show that they could play well without Jeff. We saw that in September. So just keep that in mind. And he has two years left on his contract for about roughly $30 million. And uh, uh, I can see the Mets eating that. There are plenty of teams that be interested in Jeff. He still can hit. I mean, he needs, probably needs to change the scene, right, I think, uh, to sort of shake him up a little bit. He's one of these players you got to shake him a little bit to get him moving, um, in my view. Uh, I could see him definitely get moved to Seattle 
that's been a place for a long time that I've liked him for extremely, well, really for many, like, like six years. Soto is expected to land the richest contract in MLB history in present-day dollars. Shohei Otani received a 12-year contract worth $700 million from the Dodgers last winter, but the deal was heavily deferred, leaving the present-day value of $437.4 million. Those deferrals could allow the Dodgers to become a major player in the Soto sweepstakes. The word is from, I guess, from Jeff Pazan, an MLB insider. He said that he doesn't see the Dodgers making that kind of a move. Uh, and I don't see, and from what people are saying, don't expect Soto to take any deferrals with any kind of contract. He's going to want to break that all-time record of most money in a season. You know, Otani has that $700 million contract. He's, you know, he's not making a lot of money. He's making about $20 million for, 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 about that for, for the length of the contract. All that money's deferred in the back end or something like that. I could be wrong on the money, uh, but... He's going to want to break that. He's going to want to break, have the highest uh, um, AAV in the history of baseball. He's going to want that. Scott, Scott Boros is going to push for that, believe me. That is his hate, his agent. Uh, there are going to be plenty of teams on him, but really there's only a few that can, to, that can afford him. The Mets are one of those teams in that high stratosphere. The Yankees are. The Giants are desperate for a, a franchise player, and they've had all kinds of turnover with their front office. Um, they have so much investment in trying to bring in a big player that they failed so many times. Look to the Mariners could be in on him, although like a, you know, there was rumor and more than just a rumor. There's a belief that he doesn't like the West Coast. That's why there's a big question mark about the Dodgers, even though they won. Seattle's a question mark for that same reason. Uh, so these 12 teams, I, I mean, I know two of them, I, you know, the Phillies would certainly be in on them, but I don't think they would want him for that kind of money. I mean, they could sort of pair him and say, look, he gets to play, he gets to finally play with Bryce Harper because they didn't get a chance to play in 2019 because Harper went to the Phillies uh, after 2018. But what do you think about the Mets signing him? I'm sure everybody would be very excited. The one thing about this Mets lineup is it needs a left-handed hitter. This is all separate pursuit from Pete Alonso. Uh, the Mets need a professional three hitter in this lineup. And Soto is a professional hitter. A guy that you know he's going to get a hit. And you know he can hit all kinds of pitching. Good pitching, bad pitching. A good bullpen he can destroy. A good starter he can destroy. That guy is, he is top of the top. He might be the best play, it might be the best hitter in baseball. Just you know, pure hitter. So to have him on your team would be and he can win. He showed he can win with the Nationals. He showed he can win with the with the Yankees. He, you could you could certainly see him playing well here with the Mets because obviously he could play in New York. He's got a big personality. Now the defensive issues are defensive issues. I don't know what the Mets are, what their thoughts would be because you know David Stern is very big on defense. Would he put him in left field? Or would he be comfortable in keeping him in right field? I don't know. But that is the one issue that could cause the Mets not to sign him. Is David Stern's uh, concern about his defense. That's the only concern that there is about this particular player. Now you let me know what you think about this video. This is very exciting stuff. The Mets are going to have a very exciting offseason. I hope we'll get the chance to see it by the time we get to, to April uh, again next year but uh, thank you for watching this video please subscribe to the baseball hut the best mets fans podcast the best mets fans channel on the internet i need to watch this because you will be light years ahead of the media about a month ago i mentioned christian walker as an option for the mess to play first the media has been talking about it all week so i was ahead of the curve on that because that makes a lot of sense if the mets don't resign Pete alonzo but that's for a video for another day Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.